It's the Man Cow Morning Show Podcast, which means you can't call in. Well, you can, but you're going to end up talking to some part-time board op with a speech impediment. Listen live for the real deal. Weekday mornings, 5.30 to 9.30 on The Loop. All right, you got a lot of guts coming in here. Oh, yeah, of course. I may punch, I may punch you in the face. I may punch you in the face. Hey, man, I, if, I can, if I can say it on the air, I got to say it person what? to person. Anything. What? No, no, meaning I would never not come on a radio show because somebody wanted to confront me. No, no. Well, let's let's, let's do it. Let's do it. I, although I saw you at the Kentucky Derby, and we were fine. We didn't get in a fist fight. No, no. I mean, and I know you before I knew Opie and Anthony, and I liked you. Um, it was one of those things where it got quite Jim a, Norton. Oh yeah, I probably should yeah, say. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes, that's how I, you know. I, I, love, I love your Black Sabbath shirt. Oh, see, I'm already like, wussing out. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> That's right, a right, 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 yes. right Seacrest came No, 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 but it was, one of the, it's, <laughs> yeah. well, it was one of those things where, like, you were fighting with Opie and Anthony. Yes. And I was on Opie and Anthony. Yes. But I never jumped in because I liked you and I knew you beforehand. You, you, I, I was just talking on another show about the Rosemont Theater, which you opened and presented for Dice. Right. I never got in, but when you started fighting with them and saying, ah, the show is failing, the show sucks, I got it, because it was a radio fight. But I had to, to respond then. But when you never bashed me personally, so I never bashed you. I never bashed you. I know you didn't. Yeah. But when you were saying, ah, the show sucks and the show well, is failing, I, then I had to respond just because I was on the show. I, I did think the show sucked. I understood that. Not, that but that was why I hit back, because I was the third member of the show. Now, now, now Jim, let me let me say this about that show. I don't, I don't really want to get into it. I could. You can, whatever you want. Jim hates Opie now, too, anyway. So. Yeah, me and Opie don't really? Like, Anthony's one of my closest friends. I texted him this morning, actually. He does the Chip podcast with me. But yeah, me and Opie why? are not... Uh, uh, hang, hang on a second. Yes, let me okay. let me just say first they didn't it, it didn't win in Chicago. No, okay. very tough, very tough market. Jim, I've known you way before them. I paid you before them. Everybody's big talk. Did you pay me? Yes. When? <laughs> we, we flew you in. You did. Yes. Okay. okay. So 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 listen. I'm telling you, everybody, and and look, you've had a few, you've got a few years on you now. I do too. Sure. Let me just say this. Everybody's your best friend. Everybody's big talk. Everybody's big talk. The guy that actually does something for you, right? Um, Those people are rare in life. Yeah, I mean, I've had a good run. I mean, uh, I was a big supporter of yours. You were before Absolutely. anybody else. Absolutely. So, so you know, you should have been working for me, not for that show. Now, you never asked me to work for you. I, I, <laughs> 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 so, 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 I should have worked for you. That's like a woman saying you should have had sex with me. Well, you said no. <laughs> <laughs> now you're telling me. Yeah. Let, me, let me. Let me just say two things behind the scenes. Two two things behind the scenes. I, I've heard the show. My hand on a Bible. I didn't grow up with Stern. I didn't listen to Stern. I've never listened to Stern. Right. Because I never wanted to seep into my head. I've yeah. never watched his movie, nor will I ever. Okay, am I lying or not? No, you're, not. No, you're telling so, the so truth. So when, he, when he's saying you grew up, in, you know, make I grew up in Long Island and worship me. I grew up in Kansas City, never heard him. There, yeah. s- as you know, syndicated radio didn't exist. Sure. I happened upon a radio show driving cross country when I had uh, Sirius or whatever, and I heard Opie and Anthony, and it was an hour of I like the ass, I like the front, I like the ass, I like the front. I couldn't. What is this? That's a great game to play, though. Which one did you choose? <laughs> I would stick with, except with Kathy. I would stick with the front. The so, so I just, I didn't. What, what I heard, I didn't think was any good. And then we have the same agent. God rest his soul. Did you know I Bob know, died? Of course, okay. I was at the funeral. So we have, the, we have the same agent. We're all friends. I get, I get. We get everybody on the phone. We're gonna, we're gonna get everybody together to fight for radio. It's bigger than these guys, and they're just. It was such, and it's probably why you hate them now. F you. Okay. Guys, we're we're under attack. We can get together. We have we have the numbers. We have free speech. We've got to fight for free speech. F you. Well, this, Anthony, I Anthony, I don't hate Anthony. No, I'm no, very but I'm close saying, with, yeah. I'm saying, I got, I got, we got the government against us. Stern, all of us, man, we're all under attack. Anyone that can move a vote, mm-hmm. not the black shows because they're not worried about the vote, mm-hmm. not the Latino shows that are cursing. They're coming after any white show that had power. And that's just the fact. Sorry. Oprah can do whatever she wants. And the reason the FCC wouldn't go against an Oprah or some of these other shows, like a GCI, which was doing dirtier stuff than me, yeah. is because they would be seen as racist and trying to keep the black man down. Okay. So where can you get money? Hmm. We'll go to the white guy shows that are, that are racy. And we could have gotten together. We could have fought the government. We had the, we had the, we had the resources. And that guy, you know, he's doing, I don't, I don't know what voices he does. He's talking to me like, you know, Andy Griffith and talking oh. to me like Frosty the Snowman. You're, Who was? you're making Ob- fun of you. Opie, Opie's doing silly voices. I'm like, dude, 
you don't have to show off. Right. You don't have to, you know how radio yeah. people play topper. You're better than me. I don't care. Whatever, whatever. This isn't about a stupid radio show. Right. This is about freedom. Hey, uh, uh, hey, Andy, Andy, you want to get a haircut? Dude, are you serious? Well, you know yeah. how radio guys are, man. It's, 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 it's a very personal thing. It's like, it, it's a, a soap opera. That's why the fans are obsessive. When they love you, they love you. When they hate you, they want to behead you. It's a very passionate yeah. thing. We take it very personally. So what's going on? Why aren't you so, friends with Opie? Me and Opie, you know, Who we cares? stopped getting along a I long time know. ago. But that's a very okay. fascinating question. No, we just didn't like each other after a while. It, it's just, you know, I can blame him. He'll blame imagine, me. Imagine that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. We all hate each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, man, it's hard. We're just doing for I'm the just money. here to steal crap today. <laughs> Dude, it's hard because if you're mad at somebody, you can't hide in a cubicle. No, you're in a yeah. lot. Yeah. Dude, you're yes, you've got mics. You yes. And you got to be creative and you have to collaborate creatively on the air. It's crazy. Right. When you're mad at each other, you get a smile and you're like, oh, I'd like to cut your throat. Oh, that's a good joke. <laughs> you can't be honest about it on the air. It's hard. Are you, how, how do we get into this? When we were in New York, you were looking for girls. I got to be careful. Sure. This is not satellite radio. Yeah, yeah no, no, I don't care. I'm, I'm more paranoid on terrestrial than most terrestrial guys are. I don't curse on oh, terrestrial. No. Well, you and I have been under the under the microscope. So yeah. we're more nervous. Like comedians come in here and go, you can't say that. No. Yeah, no. yeah. You can't. And and the rules are so stupid, right? Yeah, bodily functions and this and that, and it's like the things that they and, think and are he, clean. And, yeah, of course. And, and then and then you and you'll love this as a comedian and as a guy that does radio. How about when they say a medical term or they say a, a filthy word, mm -hmm. right? And then well, and then they say it again medically, like, oh, it's okay then. I want to stick my finger in her. No, I said the medical word. No, no you can't. Right. Yeah, no, it doesn't right. work like that. You no. said the medical word, but then you mention your face after it. You can't right. do it. <laughs> so the minute, <laughs> and if you have a doctor on and you're talking about genital enlargement or whatever, the minute somebody laughs, right. then it's a fine. That's crazy. Because it's not a serious medical discussion. Right. It's it's a comedy bit. Right. So the rules we have are, and it, to me, it makes it fun. It makes doing the show fun. Oh, I, yeah, I couldn't go back. It was, in 2004, we went up on satellite and it's like, it was not even the language. It's not the cursing. It's like, I don't mind not cursing, but like, it's the content. It's like you just said, the things yeah. you can't even say medically. That's where it became very difficult. Right. It, it's the stuff that is, is around the profanity that you had to avoid that was really rough. Okay, so we were in New York, and you were looking for cheap prostitutes to fill cups for you. I can't say of what. Sure. That you would drink. It was your Ooh. email handle I used to. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Blank drinker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you? <laughs> oh absolutely. No, no, no. But but I'm talking. What? I'm talking. They had to be African American crack whores. He oh, was, was he was specific. very specific. I didn't care about that. Maybe that's who I was looking for that night. I was never. <laughs> I was never racially specific. It never okay. bothered me. That night, you were looking for black crack whores. Okay, oh my yeah, that's, that's not, that, that, that sounds not like me. Right, now, right, now, right, now right, right, keep in mind, yeah, this was before you, it, this was, that sounds about right. Yeah. This, this was before you had, this was, this was before you had any money. Yeah, that's like saying to somebody, remember that time we were driving to work and you were speeding? You go, no, but that sounds like something I would do. Yeah. Right, so, okay, okay. <laughs> Wow. Okay, that, that does sound like so, something I would do. So, did you did you that night end up with a prostitute drinking? In all stuff? honesty, I don't remember. I right. have to be truthful. I but, I but truly is this don't something remember. that you've done I, in my life? Oh my god, yeah. It's funny. I don't, I don't do it. Why would you do this? I don't know. It, it's it, like, it is the most perverted thing that I've ever experienced in my life. You know what's funny? Like I, I don't even do prostitutes anymore. Like I did for a long time, and then yeah. after a while, you get older. It's like, ah, eh, it's not a more. I just, I don't. It's not for me anymore. But I'm not <laughs> judging it. Like, do it if you want to. What are you on to now? Just, I just dating. Like, you know, I'm 49 now. I'm like, <laughs> my midlife, my midlife crisis is crazy. My midlife crisis is, I just want to go out with a girl and have dinner and hold her hand. Like, I don't want, I don't want a sports car. <laughs> I just want something nice now. Like, I'm so yes. far sh a shot that I just want something nice. Wow. You're friends with Louis. So I what he Louis. did, he's just a sexual deviant, right? He's not. Did he block the door? I, to my knowledge, no. If he I didn't block the door, he's just a sexual deviant, yeah, then, right? Think, he's not a rapist. I th no, 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 no. I know Louis for twenty years, man. Let me tell you something. There's a difference between a guy who does something dumb, and I think what Louis did was dumb. Like, there's certain things you just can't pull out at work. Like, you know, I understand right. that you just can't. <laughs> right. There's certain things you can't do. Yeah, like it, Al's checkbook. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, yes, Al will never pull out his checkbook. That's right. But yes. is he a predator? No. Louis yeah. is not a predator. Just should he be mentioned with Kevin Spacey and what he's been alleged to have done or what Harvey Weinstein has been alleged to be done? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely no, it's not. just a weird fetish that he but has, it's all, right? But everything's getting lumped in together. Yeah. No matter what it is that somebody did, it's all getting Jim, put in that. Yeah. Jim Norton is here. Jim, would that please you, though? Because that's not my thing. As you know, and you and I years ago had this conversation, 
uh, about, you know, you were a pervert and I was not that of a de- much of a degenerate. I'm not, and I'm not, I guess I am bashing a little, but I, no, I don't mind. I, 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 I've, I, I've talked I, about it myself. You're, you're where, you're, you are now where I was and where I still am is I'm happy just to lay on top of a girl, even if our clothes are on at this point. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Or I'm on the bottom if she has a special belt. <laughs> no, whatever makes us both. <laughs> 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 but, but, but pleasuring myself in front of a woman that doesn't want to see me pleasure myself, oh, it's that doesn't, that doesn't, that's, that's I don't very get that. Bizarre. It doesn't do anything for me either. But again, I'm not saying this is a virtue signal. It just doesn't turn me on. The, the idea of somebody being involved with it and in on it is yeah. what turns me on. I like her deviance. I like the fact that she'll tell me things because I like stuff that women have done that's slutty and dirty. Like, not only do I not slut shame, I seek it because I feel damaged. So I love oh. your damage. <laughs> okay. I want your damage. All right. So, so you uh, used to hide porno magazines under your porch. Is that the story you told me? No, no, no. I would hide them under the bed. A monster rain I did under my porch. That was yeah. when I was like very, very young in Edison, New Jersey, and my friends and I would yell monster rain, and then we'd hide under the porch and do things to each other, which was quite pleasurable. Okay. So <laughs> we were just little lads. We've talked about this, and I don't know if you've ever talked about this, but every boy has had this experience. Every boy, you're driving along on your Schwinn bike you're driving, or you're walking along, and all of a sudden you find a page of pornography. Sure. Right. Do you think there's some Pied Piper of porn, probably a guy like you that just throws pages out of magazine? I hope for so, boys? because he changed the course of my life. I it, still it, remember the first pornographic photo I ever saw. I do, too. It was a high-gloss photo. The guys had, it was two guys, one girl. They had mutton chops. I'm not going to say what they were doing. Let's just picture, <laughs> the, letter, picture the letter H. That, that's okay. exactly what they were doing. Thalia Hall tonight. He'll be at Thalia Hall tonight. That's a great place. Great venue. Chappelle, is it really? This, is it Thalia yeah. Hall? Yeah. Yeah. That's where Chappelle played when he came here. Thalia Hall. Talia Hall. My, right. Mine was a club magazine, which is as, as perverted as it can get. Do you remember Seika on the cover of those? There was nothing well, this, I love more. This, oh. this was a Seika. And by the way, Seika has, you know, she's a Chicago girl, been in here yes. a lot. We could not fit her in this studio. You're a little guy. We can squeeze you in. She's so big now. Oh, did she put some weight on? It happens a lot. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know well, I still would, though. I'd, st- I'd still sleep with her out of respect. You think that. You think that. You couldn't. You, you know, couldn't. You'd get lost. Hey, You'd get lost. If Jimmy Page walked in and he, and he had no legs, would you still play guitar with him? Yeah, of course. Terrible example, Jim. Terrible example. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't mind. I would still do it out of respect yeah. for the legacy. Brother. Seika, the platinum bomb, bombshell. I didn't know where she was from. Was she was she from Sweden? Where was she from? And then you right. meet her. Yeah, from Chicago. Yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, Carrington showed her on Chicago. the loop. Did yeah. I see that? Yeah, she did a show on this radio station. Yeah. Did she do a radio show? Oh That's yeah, right. yeah. Late night, late night talk, kind of like we're doing right now. Oh, I didn't know that. Good for her. So, uh, you know, this is kind of cool. We have right now on the phone. Enjoying the Man Cow Morning Show podcast day. Call the show and win free stuff. If you got the stones. Weekday mornings, 5.30 to 9.30 on Chicago's Classic Rock Station. 97.9 The Loop. Did you see The Room? I, I uh, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. With, uh, with uh, James Franco and Seth? No, the real version. Oh, I'm sorry, with, uh, with Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. Pete, how is, uh, <laughs> how is this new movie with uh, James Franco? It's really good. I... Uh, Maybe incomprehensible if you haven't seen The Room before, but otherwise it's really good. Franco's amazing, and it's really, really funny. Uh, and what else What else is open this weekend? The Shape of Water, how is that? The new Benicio Del Toro or uh, Guillermo Del Toro? Guillermo Del Toro. It's a, it's a really great movie. It sound, the, the premise sounds ridiculous. It's basically A woman falls in love with a creature from the Black Lagoon, right? And gets it on with it. Oh, that's oh, cool. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, that Sounds yeah. like a Jim Norton yeah, yeah, fantasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless she walks away with a cup of, of goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds ridiculous, but it is incredibly well made. Uh, it's, it's one of the best movies that Del Toro has ever done. He's done some pretty fantastic things. Okay, anything else you want to mention? Uh, the only other big thing is The Darkest Hour, which is basically Gary Oldman trying to win an Academy Award for playing Winston Churchill. Yeah, and flip her uh, up or flip her down. Flip her down. He's okay. Down. The movie's just kind of a oh, bore. But they're yeah. certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, too. Is the best movie of the year, Pete, the movie Manatee, is the best movie of the year, Dunkirk? Uh, I haven't figured it out yet, but it it's definitely up there. It's, it's, it will be, it'll be up way up there on that list. I can't wait for your list. All right, good. get back underwater, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> You guys like Dunkirk? I hated that. I didn't. I, loved, want, I, I didn't. Loved want, it. I, didn't, I thought the the shots were brilliant. The, yeah. The way the war stuff was shot, but I just I didn't like it. I wanted to like it. Was Eatman your agent? He was for a long, long time. My agent too. Yeah, he was a good guy, man. And uh, I knew he was sick. And Bob, he would call. And when he called you, he would be like, uh, "Yeah, he yeah, sounded yeah. bad." Hey, how are you? He would whisper. Aww. And then uh, I was I happened to be in L.A. doing uh, something, and uh, they and he and he passed away. So I, I was lucky. I was able to go to the to the to the, to the funeral. 
I wonder why he never tried to get us together to broker a piece. I guess he didn't care. You know, Bob would try that. Like, you know, he would always try, you know, a, a, a Jim. But you know how whatever he called, it was never good news. It was never like the company's happy. <laughs> <laughs> it was always like, Jim, I tried, tried to uh, I tried to negotiate. They mailed me a noose. Uh, they're not interested in <laughs> having you anymore. You know, Bob was never like a happy-go-lucky guy. That's true. And that's probably what killed him. He was brutally honest, though. Is Bob's the an honest uh, guy. Is, is the, uh, do you think the story about... Your old radio sidekick being a racist, do you think that was overplayed? Yeah, you know, Anthony's one of those guys where he thinks that, like, he hates that the, the language rules have changed. And he hates that the, the fact that uh, the, the rules and what you can say and can't say and what perception is. It's more, I think Anthony's, most of his anger is not about race, it's about the press and the way things are portrayed. That's my take on Me Anthony Meaning Mellon. what? Meaning what? Me, he hates the way the media spins things, because the media spins things a certain way and you know they do it. Whereas if, if, if a white guy does something, they say it honestly, but if a black guy does it and there's a racial motivation, the press is, who's mostly white, well, is afraid of saying that. Well, I, I mean... And that's not about black people, that's about the press, they, who are mostly white people. I, I've right. noticed in Chicago it doesn't seem like they mention race unless it's a white guy. Yes, and then, that, then race gets mentioned. You know, there's people are secretly afraid that deep down their own ugliness is going to seep through and they're going to be transparent. They don't want to talk about race because, oh, my God, if I say this wrong, people are going to see what I really am. And that's why they're afraid to talk about it. That's my theory. Are you an Aussie fan? I certainly am. As a man, too. Not just as a musician. As a man, I love him. He's as awesome. A man. <laughs> I love him. He cheated on his wife with his hairdresser. Oh, okay. no, no, no. Oh, that's on. the end, man. That's the first I, that's thing the end. I stay <laughs> corrected. I love him more than ever now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lita, how are you? Hey, good morning, guys. Hi, Lita. How are you? Good morning here. I'm good. We're just about ready to board a flight. And, you you uh, headed here. We give you a quick call. We're going to be at the Brower House in Lombard uh, tomorrow oh, nice. night. Oh, that's good. Uh, Lita, yep. my, uh, my name is Jim Norton. We've talked before. You probably don't remember me. I'm forgettable. <laughs> You've talked to me. Do you remember uh, me? Uh, yes, yeah, no. of course. Luke, Two of her greatest never, interviews ever. Yeah. <laughs> How funny is that? How funny? We're, I'm infinitely, we're infinitely forgettable, I'm you understand. I'm saying you probably forgot about me. She's such a nice person. She just giggled like uh, this. She's giggled yeah. like, look at her publicist. Who is this idiot? You're right. Do you know she was the lead guitarist of the Runaways? I, I probably oh, wow. did know that and forgot. Going back to the 70s. Yeah. Joe Jett? Yeah. Joe Jett? Okay. Yeah. And who else? And who Cherry Curry? Was that her name? Eslita. Curry, yeah. Yeah. Cherry Curry, Joan Jett, uh, Sandy West, who passed away quite a few years ago. And Jackie Fox. I want to tell you, as a father of two uh, daughters, I listen to Cherry Bomb now completely differently. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I, I'm not saying I hate that song, but it makes me. I used to love the song. It makes me very uncomfortable. Hello, mom. Hello, dad. <laughs> it's your ch ch Cherry Bomb. <laughs> oh yeah, get back. Grab you, grab you until you're sore. <laughs> get back in your room. Oh man, what part? What part of England are you from? I'm from London. We lived in southwest London. London, I've heard of that. Well, That's yeah. one of the bigger cities. Big clock. <laughs> yeah, they got a big clock. Yes. <laughs> heard of it. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it when you grow awesome. up, do you want to be Doctor Who like everybody else from England now that they can now that they're gonna be a lady there's gonna be a, a lady Doctor Who, do you wanna be Doctor Who? Nah, I yeah. just wanna rock. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> And that's what you're going to do. I play some rock. I um are you still friendly with Joan and the rest of them? No, she don't talk to me. Yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm, Lee, I'm going to tell you something. You don't have to comment, but we have a we have a pool here for the for sex sex crimes. What are we calling it? The sex pervert pool. Yes. Who's going to be the next to get busted? Right. Joan Jett is in my pool. Ooh. Oh, really? My my hand on the Bible. I'm not kidding. Why Joan Jett? Okay. Because Joan Jett is very aggressive with young women. Yeah. Is she? I've heard stories. Yeah. Wow. Allegedly. I've heard Actually, alleged stories. Yeah. Cool. I'm the same way, the same way I heard alleged stories about Harvey Weinstein and alleged stories about Louis C.K. Mm -hmm. and Matt Lauer. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying women have said I was ouchy for a long time. Wow. Boy, that Joan is aggressive. Really? Yes. I'm not. They could have all been liars. Ooh, I'm going to go home and watch the Crimson and Clover video. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you if 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 you're if if you're not gay or you're not headed that way and you're at a Joan Jett concert and you've got big fi big fingers, oh, yeah, man. sit at the back. Wow. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Come on, Lita, that had to make you laugh. <laughs> no. No. I was just thinking of something that Edward Edward Van Halen said to me a long time ago. He said, I wish I had I wish I had a vagina. And I said, well, why would you want one of those when you've got, you're a man? Mm -hmm. Why would you want a vagina? And yeah. he said, because if I had a vagina, I'd be putting on. Uh, okay. All right. Lita Ford. Lita Ford, ladies and gentlemen. Lita Ford. Now you see, Opie, yeah. how different it Just is being on terrestrial radio. <laughs> Just talking. Just talking. <laughs> 
Brower House in Lombard. The legendary Lita Ford. You still friendly with Dice? I love Dice. I haven't talked to him in a while, but you know, Andrew changed my life. He's one of my favorite people who's ever existed. I hope the time show he is is very good. Didn't he almost just die? Why? Did he have a heart attack or something? No, he Dice? Said? No. There's something no, no, wrong no. with him. No, he probably said that because he was late for a gig. Uh, <laughs> Need an excuse. <laughs> I, just saw you, I just saw you with a show with Robert De Niro. He was a comedian. Com the comedian, yeah, yeah, and he uh, he opened my special. He uh, he uh, my, my special on Netflix. Uh, De Niro. Agrees and you're with in the Irishman. Is it really funny? I am in the Irishman. Yeah, or the is new De Niro, De Niro movie. Funny. You know, he can be really funny. Yeah, sometimes it's fun. It's funny when he's playing serious. Like when De Niro's playing serious situationally, he's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, he spanked me. He spanked me in the opening of my special, my bare bottom. It's, it is <laughs> uh, the greatest thing I've ever done in show business. Jim, um, did you watch me have sex? No, we listened to you through a door. I'll never forget that with Dice. We were sitting there face to face with our ears on the wall. He's going, oh, listen. Because Dice would How always... How many people were there that day? Dude, I heard the story a hundred times. Dice, 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 Dice loves that story. <laughs> Dice loves that story. <laughs> what happened? He loves it. It's, it's true. And he was—he would always talk about how much man cow is packing. Let's just say that. He would yeah. always brag for man cow. You know yeah. what, Jim? You're welcome back on this show. <laughs> Any time. But he would. Anytime. He really would. The Dice would always so he was obsessed with it. And we were listening in the hotel and just listening. And I'll never forget being face to face with Andrew, ears to the wall. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I got weirded out. I'm like, is he going to kiss me? <laughs> he was eating like one of those gobstopper child candies that he likes. It was a bizarre moment. Do you remember the sound? No, I don't. He loves the sound. What was the she sound? She goes, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what he calls me, and I can't explain why because we're on the radio. Why? What does he call you? Applehead. Apple. I do remember that. Yeah. Applehead. Absolutely. Applehead. Applehead. Yes, I do remember why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dry mouth. Our president. My God. Now, 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 brother. You and I don't. We don't. I, I don't share the hooker drinking stuff with sure. you, but we do share. We've done drugs in I've, my life. I have. Okay. When I was younger. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Does Trump not sound, we don't, nobody can get lewds anymore, but it's definitely is the guy that does lewds. I knew guys that did lewds. Does it not sound like he's into lewds? He sounded to me at that moment like he'd had dental work done. Like he literally <laughs> sounded like he came from the dentist. Like, like Anthony ruined uh, Star Trek for me when he said that, uh, that Leonard Nimoy sounded like he was talking over his dentures. <laughs> You're always going to be my friend. And I'm like, ah, I can never enjoy that again. <laughs> yes. That's what Trump sounds like. Either that he's high on something, which yeah. I don't think he is, yeah. or, or that yeah, he, he doesn't drink. had dental work done. Yeah. I believe that he doesn't drink. Did but, you meet Hef? Did I mean have I never met Hugh Hefner, oh, I man? I can't believe that. But it always hurt her, 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 his teeth swam in his face. Yeah. Oh, do they? Play? Yeah, they're probably fake. You know, consider how much stuff was dripped on them. I oh, yes. 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 <laughs> his regular teeth. I'd rather meet Guccione. I love Andrew. People, uh, you know, people with bad mouth dice. It's like he treated me so good in, in my life, man. He changed my life. Yeah, well, um, you know, let them bad mouth them. When they play Madison Square Garden and have Guns N' Roses right. as their opening act. Right. Yeah. Then they can say whatever they want. Yeah, I mean, the guy has, uh, it's amazing, like, people forget, like, yeah, a lot of guys do, like, you know, do arenas now, like, you know, mm -hmm. Kevin's doing them, and, and, and Bill Burr, and Amy yeah. did the Garden, Louie, but Dice did it before social media, Dice did it at a, a time that was a little bit harder yeah. than what guys are doing now. I don't know if it'll ever come out, and this is an awful thing to say, there is a huge, huge Bill Burr story. You, you, you just remember, you're going to hear it someday. Okay, it's not a bad one though. No, he is. Oh, okay, he, he is related to somebody. You will not believe who he's related to. That's a fact. It's a fact, and I can't say who. And don't guess on the air, no. please. You'll get me in big trouble. Okay. Wow. Bill Burr is re related to somebody. Somebody extremely somebody famous. famous. <laughs> that, that's been kept secret. Oh my God! Mm. Now I want to know. Caitlyn yeah. Jenner. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. So I always thought Brian Regan was hilarious. I think his new special is wrong. I, I thought it was off. Did you see his new special? No, no, no. He's just a brilliant comic. I did not. Okay. Awful. Okay. Okay. Um, Gaffigan. Love Jim Gaffigan. Jim Gaffigan I've known for a long time. He used to do weird characters. Like he would do a guy who who liked wood, and he would just go on stage and go, I like wood. And we're like, what is this big-headed psychopath talking about? But Gaffigan was always a good actor, and I remember, I never got a commercial. I'm just not what you want to hawk your product. I blink a lot. I'm uncomfortable to look at. But I wound up... I had a Rolling Rock callback. The only uh -huh. callback I ever got for commercial. And I walk in and I do the read and I come out and Gaffigan is in and I'm like, I'm absolutely not going to get this. Right. And Gaffigan well, landed the whole yeah. campaign. So yeah, Jim Gaffigan, six nights at the Nokia in New York. He's, who else, he's amazing. Who else is, what about Sebastian? Huge, like, huge here in Chicago. I like Maniscalco a lot. I, t I actually opened for Dice with uh, uh, me Sebastian. and him. Yes, we worked together and uh, he was so good looking he would irritate me but I wound up liking him because he wears silk shirts. If you're a comedian and you wear silk shirts, <laughs> normally someone should fire an arrow at you. Okay. <laughs> Sebastian is hilarious. Jim, He's a great funny. comic. Jim, I'm not I'm not bashing Sebastian. I love him. He he grew up with my wife. 
family friend. I love Sebastian. But I will say, after the tour with Dice and after the tour with Carlos Mencia, that's a different act. When yeah. he, he learned. He was influenced. He learned. You can yeah. see their influences oh, on that. Sometimes you watch a guy work, though, and you do pick up stuff because you work in the bigger rooms. You work in the more mm -hmm. aggressive rooms. Sometimes you pick up the way a guy will handle a situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe it changes the way you do business because, like, he's high energy now. So I've, I'm like, maybe he always was. But, like, a lot of times those big crowds will force you into moving fast because you're like, right. if I slow down, I'm dead. So, so who, who else? Uh, who else is? Uh, who's the guy that came in that I love? The guy looks like he's wearing a glasses. You love Eric Griffin. Eric Griffin, I love. You don't know him. I, I don't love, know Eric. I love Tony Hinchcliffe. You know, Tony Hinchcliffe. I like loves. Tony a lot. Yeah, man. Tony's He's good my friends boy. with Rogan. Yeah, yeah. He's Tony's a good dude. my boy. Very funny dude. So when he gets a show, go on there and you got and you can talk crap about me. I will. I love <laughs> <laughs> okay, are we friends again? We will always. Okay. Be, I've All always right. liked you, and, and so I would believe me. I would say if I didn't. I mean, okay. I, 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 I always right. did. And I was always open about it. Okay. And for a long time, fans would get on me yeah. if I didn't jump in. And, and start bashing, bashing me. Right. yeah, or anybody. I only bash when it comes to I feel like I've been attacked personally or, or uh, in some way. That's the only time I do it. All right, asshole, get out of here. Nice oh. language. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for. I'm glad we got a chance to talk. Have a good show at uh, Talia Hall tonight. Thank Excellent. you. And you got Sean yeah, Donnelly right. coming up. He's a really funny guy I know from New York. So you'll he's like. He's not Sean coming up. in here actually. No. Oh no. We, no. We, I think we, he's we, going to one of the other. We, 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 didn't, we didn't want him. Oh, I never heard of him. Is, is he, he good? Funny? Yeah, sure. That's funny. Did I blow it? Yeah, no, no. He's oh, a funny. Guy. He's a funny comic. He's a good stand-up. So it was either we... you or him. So oh, you made the right move. But I mean... <laughs> <laughs>